Andrew II, also known as Andrew of Jerusalem, was king of Hungary and Croatia between 1205 and 1235. He ruled the Principality of Halic from 1188 until 1189-1190, and again between 1208-1209 and 1210. He was the younger son of Bela III of Hungary, who entrusted him with the administration of the newly conquered Principality of Halic in 1188. Andrew's rule was unpopular, and the boyars expelled him. Bela III willed property and money to Andrew, obliging him to lead a crusade to the Holy Land. Instead, Andrew forced his elder brother, King Emmerich of Hungary, to cede Croatia and Dalmatia as an appanage to him in 1197. The following year, Andrew occupied Hum. Despite the fact that Andrew did not stop conspiring against Emmerich, the dying king made Andrew guardian of his son, Ladislaus III, in 1204. After the premature death of Ladislaus, Andrew ascended the throne in 1205. According to historian Laszlo Kotler, IT was amidst the socio-political turmoil during, Andrew's, reign that the relations, arrangements, institutional framework and social categories that arose under Stephen I. started to disintegrate in the higher echelons of society in Hungary. Andrew introduced a new grants policy, the so-called new institutions, giving away money and royal estates to his partisans despite the loss of royal revenues. He was the first Hungarian monarch to adopt the title of King of Halic and Latimeria. He waged at least a dozen wars to seize the two Rus principalities, but the local boyars and neighboring princes prevented him from conquering the principalities. He participated in the Fifth Crusade to the Holy Land in 1217-1218, but the crusade was a failure. When the Servians Regis, or royal servants, rose up, Andrew was forced to issue the Golden Bull of 1222, confirming their privileges. This led to the rise of the nobility in the Kingdom of Hungary. His Diploma Andrenum of 1224 listed the liberties of the Transylvanian Saxon community. The employment of Jews and Muslims to administer the royal revenues led him into conflict with the Holy See and the Hungarian prelates. Andrew pledged to respect the privileges of the clergyman and to dismiss his non-Christian officials in 1233, but he never fulfilled the latter promise. Andrew's first wife, Gertrude of Morania, was murdered in 1213 because her blatant favoritism towards her German kinsmen and courtiers stirred up discontent among the native lords. The veneration of their daughter, Elizabeth of Hungary, was confirmed by the Holy See during Andrew's lifetime. After Andrew's death, his sons, Bela and Columban, accused his third wife, Beatrice d'Este, of adultery and never considered her son, Stephen, to be a legitimate son of Andrew. Andrew was the second son of King Bela III and Bela's first wife, Agnes of Antioch. The year of Andrew's birth is not known, but modern historians agree that he was born around 1177. Andrew was first mentioned in connection to his father's invasion of the Principality of Halic in 1188. That year, Bela III invaded Halic upon the request of its former prince, Vladimir II Yaroslavich, who had been expelled by his subjects. Bela forced the new prince, Roman Mastislavich, to flee. After conquering Halic, he granted it to Andrew. Bela also captured Vladimir Yaroslavich and imprisoned him in Hungary. After Bela's withdrawal from Halic, Roman Mastislavich returned with the assistance of Rurik Rostislavich, Prince of Bielgert Kievsky. They tried to expel Andrew and his Hungarian retinue, but the Hungarians routed the united forces of Mastislavich and Rostislavich. A group of local boyars offered the throne to Rostislav Ivanovich, a distant cousin of the imprisoned Vladimir Yaroslavich. Bela III sent reinforcements to Halic, enabling Andrew's troops to repel the attacks. Andrew's reign remained unpopular in Halic, because the Hungarian soldiers insulted local women and did not respect Orthodox churches. Consequently, the local boyars allied themselves with their former prince, Vladimir Yaroslavich, who had escaped from captivity and returned to Halic. Duke Casimir II of Poland also supported Vladimir Yaroslavich, and they expelled Andrew and his retinue from the Principality in August 1189 or 1190. Andrew returned to Hungary after his defeat. He did not receive a separate duchy from his father, who only gave him estates and money. On his deathbed, Bela III, who had pledged to lead a crusade to the Holy Land, ordered Andrew to fulfill his vow. Andrew's father died on April 23, 1196, and Andrew's older brother, Emric, succeeded him. Andrew used the funds that he inherited from his father to recruit supporters among the Hungarian lords. He also formed an alliance with Leopold VI, Duke of Austria, and they plotted against Emric. 
their united troops routed the Royal Army at Mackie, Slavonia, in December 1197. Under duress, King Emmerich gave Croatia and Dalmatia to Andrew as an appanage. In practice, Andrew administered Croatia and Dalmatia as an independent monarch. He minted coins, granted land and confirmed privileges. He cooperated with the Francopans, Babonish, and other local lords. The canons regular of the Holy Sepulchre settled in the province during his rule. Taking advantage of Miroslav of Hum's death, Andrew invaded Hum and occupied at least the land between the Satina and Neretva rivers. He styled himself, by the grace of God, Duke of Zadar and of all Dalmatia, Croatia and Hum in his charters. Pope Innocent III urged Andrew to lead a crusade to the Holy Land, but Andrew hatched a new conspiracy against Emmerich with the help of John, Abbot of Pannonhalma, Volslaus, Bishop of Vac, and many other prelates and lords. The Pope threatened him with excommunication if he failed to fulfill his father's vow, but Andrew did not yield. The conspiracy was uncovered on March 10, 1199, when King Emmerich sees letters written by Andrew's partisans to Bishop Bolslaus. That summer, royal troops routed Andrew's army near Lake Bolotone, and Andrew fled to Austria. A papal legate mediated a reconciliation between Andrew and Emmerich, who allowed Andrew to return to Croatia and Dalmatia in 1200. Andrew married Gertrude of Morania, her father, Berthold, Duke of Morania, owned extensive domains in the Holy Roman Empire along the borders of Andrew's duchy. The Arpod stripes and four gules stripes, on Andrew's personal coat of arms when Emmerich's son, Ladislaus, was born around 1200, Andrew's hopes to succeed his brother as king were shattered. Pope Innocent confirmed the child's position as heir to the crown, declaring that Andrew's future sons would only inherit Andrew's duchy. Andrew planned a new rebellion against his brother, but King Emmerich captured him without resistance near Varajdin in October 1203. All, the magnates of the kingdom and almost the whole of the Hungarian army deserted, King Emmerich, and unlawfully sided with Duke Andrew. Very few men indeed remained with the king, and even they were terrified at the extent of the insurrection and did not dare to urge the king to hope for success, but rather advised him to flee. Then it happened that one day both sides had drawn close to each other and were beginning to prepare themselves in earnest for battle. After, much wise thought, with inspiration from heaven, King Emmerich, found a successful way by which he might recover his right to the kingdom and still remain guiltless of bloodshed. So he said to his men, Stay here a while, and do not follow me. Then he laid down his weapons, and taking only a leafy bough in his hand he walked slowly into the enemy ranks. As he passed through the midst of the armed multitude, he cried out in a loud and strong voice, Now I shall see who will dare to raise a hand to. Shed the blood of the royal lineage. Seeing him, all fell back, and not daring even to mutter, they left a wide passage for him on either side. And then when, King Emmerich, reached his brother, he took him, and leading him outside the body of troops, he sent him to a certain castle for custody. Thomas the Archdeacon, history of the bishops of Salona and Split Andrew was first imprisoned in the fort of Gorngi Nejanek, then in Estergon. Alexander of the Hont Pasmany clan freed him in early 1204. Having fallen ill, King Emmerich had his son, Ladislaus, crowned king on 26 August. Andrew reconciled with his dying brother, who entrusted him with the guardianship of his son and the administration of the entire kingdom until the ward should reach the age of majority, according to the nearly contemporaneous Thomas the Archdeacon. King Emmerich died on November 30, 1204. Andrew governed the kingdom as latest losses regent, but he counted his regnal years from the time of his brother's death, showing that he already regarded himself as the lawful monarch during Ladislaus III's reign. Pope Innocent told Andrew that he should remain loyal to Ladislaus. Instead, Andrew seized the money that Emmerich had deposited for Ladislaus in Pelis Abbey. Ladislaus's mother, Constance of Aragon, fled from Hungary, taking her son to Austria. Andrew prepared for a war against Leopold VI, Duke of Austria, but Ladislaus suddenly died in Vienna on May 7, 1205. Andrew II depicted in Illuminated Chronicle John, Archbishop of Kalicha, crowned Andrew a king in Sekeshvayarvar on May 29, 1205. Andrew introduced a new policy for royal grants, which he called new institutions in one of his charters. He distributed large portions of the royal domain, royal castles and all estates attached to them, as inheritable grants to his supporters, declaring that the best measure of a royal grant is its being immeasurable. His new institutions altered the relations between the monarchs and the Hungarian lords. 
During the previous two centuries, a lord's status primarily depended on the income he received for his services to the monarch. After the introduction of the new institutions, their inheritable estates yielded sufficient revenues. This policy also diminished the funds upon which the authority of the ispans, or heads, of the counties, who were appointed by the monarchs, had been based. During his reign, Andrew was intensely interested in the internal affairs of his former principality of Halage. He launched his first campaign to recapture Halage in 1205 or 1206. Upon the boyar's request, he intervened against Sevalid Sviatoslavich, Prince of Chernigov, and his allies on behalf of Daniel Romanovich, the child prince of Halage, and Lodomeria. Sviatoslavich and his allies were forced to withdraw. Andrew adopted the title of King of Galicia and Lodomeria, demonstrating his claim to suzerainty in the two principalities. After Andrew returned to Hungary, Sevalid Sviatoslavich's distant cousin, Vladimir Igorovich, seized both Halic and Lodomeria, expelling Daniel Romanovich and his mother. They fled to Leszek I of Poland, who suggested that they visit Andrew. However, Vladimir Igorovich sent many gifts to both Andrew and Leszek, dissuading them from attacking him on behalf of Romanovich, according to the Galician Volhynian Chronicle. Vladimir Igorovich's rebellious brother, Roman Igorovich, soon came to Hungary, seeking Andrew's assistance. Roman returned to Halic and expelled Vladimir Igorovich with the help of Hungarian auxiliary troops. Andrew confirmed the liberties of two Dalmatian towns, Split and Amish, and issued a new charter listing the privileges of the archbishops of Split in 1207. Taking advantage of a conflict between Roman Igorovich and his boyars, Andrew sent troops to Halic under the command of Benedict, son of Corlet. Benedict captured Roman Igorovich and occupied the principality in 1208 or 1209. Instead of appointing a new prince, Andrew made Benedict governor of Halic. Benedict tortured boyars and was addicted to lechery, according to the Galician Volhynian Chronicle. The boyars offered the throne to Mstislav Mastislavich, prince of Svenigorod, if he could overthrow Benedict. Mstislav Mastislavich invaded Halic, but he could not defeat Benedict. Gertrude of Morania and Andrew depicted in the 13th century Landgrafane Psalter from the Landgraviate of Thuringia Queen Gertrude's two brothers, Ekbert, Bishop of Bomberg, and Henry II, Margrave of Istria, fled to Hungary in 1208 after they were accused of participating in the murder of Philip, King of the Germans. Andrew granted large domains to Bishop Ekbert in the Sapeseg region. Gertrude's youngest brother, Berthold, had been Archbishop of Kalica since 1206, he was made ban of Croatia and Dalmatia in 1209. Andrew's generosity towards his wife's German relatives and courtiers discontented the local lords. According to historian Gula Christo, the anonymous author of the deeds of the Hungarians referred to the Germans from the Holy Roman Empire when he sarcastically mentioned that now, the Romans graze. On the goods of Hungary. In 1209, Zadar, which had been lost to the Venetians, was liberated by one of Andrew's Dalmatian vassals, Donald of Sidraga, but the Venetians recaptured the town a year later. Roman Igorovich reconciled with his brother, Vladimir Igorovich, in early 1209 or 1210. Their united forces vanquished Benedict's army, expelling the Hungarians from Halic. Vladimir Igorovich sent one of his sons, Sevalid Vladimirovich, bearing gifts to the king in Hungary to appease Andrew, according to the Galician Volhynian Chronicle. A group of discontented Hungarian lords offered the crown to Andrew's cousins, the sons of Andrew's uncle, Geza, they lived in Greek land. However, the cousins' envoys were captured and split in 1210. In the early 1210s, Andrew sent an army of Saxons, Vlachs, Shekeles and Pechenegs commanded by Joachim, Count of Hermannstadt, to assist Borel of Bulgaria's fight against three rebellious Cuman chieftains. Around the same time, Hungarian troops occupied Belgrade and Baranks, which had been lost to Bulgaria under Emmerich. Andrew's army defeated the Cumans at Vidin. Andrew granted the Barkasog to the Teutonic Knights. The Knights were to defend the easternmost regions of the Kingdom of Hungary against the Cumans and encourage their conversion to Catholicism. A group of boyars, who were alarmed by the despotic acts of Vladimir Igorovich, asked Andrew to restore Daniel Romanovich as ruler of Halic in 1210 or 1211. Andrew and his allies, Leszek I of Poland and at least five Rus princes, sent their armies to Halic and restored Daniel Romanovich. Local boyars expelled Daniel Romanovich's mother in 1212. She persuaded Andrew to personally lead his army to Halic. He captured Volodislav Kormulkic, the most influential boyar, and took him to Hungary. 
After Andrew withdrew from Halic, the boyars again offered the throne to Mstislav Mastislavich, who expelled Daniel Romanovich and his mother from the principality. Andrew departed for a new campaign against Halic in summer 1213. During his absence, Hungarian lords who were aggrieved at Queen Gertrude's favoritism towards her German entourage captured and murdered her and many of her courtiers in the Pelis Hills on 28 September. When he heard of her murder, Andrew returned to Hungary and ordered the execution of the murderer, Peter, son of Tor. However, Peter's accomplices, including Palatine Bank Bar Kalin, did not receive severe punishments. A group of Hungarian lords, whom Andrew called perverts in one of his letters, was plotting to dethrone Andrew and crown his eldest son. The eight-year-old Bela, but they failed to dethrone him and could only force Andrew to consent to Bela's coronation in 1214. Andrew and Leszek of Poland signed a treaty of alliance, which obliged Andrew's second son, Kalaman, to marry Leszek of Poland's daughter, Salomea. Andrew and Leszek jointly invaded Halic in 1214, and Kalaman was made prince. He agreed to cede Przemysl to Leszek of Poland. The following year, Andrew returned to Halic and captured Przemysl. Leszek of Poland soon reconciled with Mstislav Mastislavich, they jointly invaded Halic and forced Kalaman to flee to Hungary. A new officer of state, the treasurer, was responsible for the administration of the royal chamber from around 1214 onwards. However, royal revenues had significantly diminished. Upon the advice of the treasurer, Dennis, son of Ampude, Andrew imposed new taxes and farmed out royal income from minting, salt trade and custom duties. The yearly exchange of coins also produced more revenue for the royal chamber. However, these measures provoked discontent in Hungary. Andrew signed a new treaty of alliance with Leszek of Poland in the summer of 1216. Leszek and Andrew's son, Kalaman, invaded Halic and expelled Mstislav Mastislavich and Daniel Romanovich, after which Kalaman was restored. That same year, Andrew met Stephen Nemanjic, Grand Prince of Serbia, in Rivno. He persuaded Stephen Nemanjic to negotiate with Henry, Latin Emperor of Constantinople, who was the uncle of Andrew's second wife, Ilanda de Courtney. Stephen Nemanjic was crowned King of Serbia in 1217. Andrew planned to invade Serbia, but Stephen Nemanjic's brother, Sava, dissuaded him, according to both versions of the life of Sava. Andrew at the head of his crusader army in July 1216, the newly elected Pope Honorius III once again called upon Andrew to fulfill his father's vow to lead a crusade. Andrew, who had postponed the crusade at least three times, finally agreed. Stephen Runciman, Tibor Almasi and other modern historians say that Andrew hoped that his decision would increase his likelihood of being elected as Latin Emperor of Constantinople, because his wife's uncle, Emperor Henry, had died in June. According to a letter written by Pope Honorius in 1217, envoys from the Latin Empire had actually informed Andrew that they planned to elect either him or his father-in-law, Peter of Courtney, as emperor. Nonetheless, the barons of the Latin Empire elected Peter of Courtney in the summer of 1216. Andrew sold and mortgaged royal estates to finance his campaign, which became part of the Fifth Crusade. He renounced his claim to Zadar in favor of the Republic of Venice so that he could secure shipping for his army. He entrusted Hungary to Archbishop John of Estergom, and entrusted Croatia and Dalmatia to Pontius de Cruz, the Templar prior of Vrana. In July 1217, Andrew departed from Zagreb, accompanied by Dukes Leopold VI of Austria and Otto I of Morania. His army was so large, at least 10,000 mounted soldiers and uncountable infantrymen, that most of it stayed behind when Andrew and his men embarked and split two months later. The ships transported them to Acre, where they landed in October. The leaders of the crusade included John of Brienne, King of Jerusalem, Leopold of Austria, the Grand Masters of the Hospitallers, the Templars and the Teutonic Knights. They held a war council in Acre, with Andrew leading the meeting. In early November, the crusaders launched a campaign for the Jordan River, forcing al adalai Sultan of Egypt, to withdraw without fighting. The crusaders then pillaged Basin. After the crusaders returned to Acre, Andrew did not participate in any other military actions. Instead, he collected relics, including a water jug allegedly used at the marriage at Cana, the heads of St. Stephen and Margaret the Virgin, the right hands of the Apostles Thomas and Bartholomew and a part of Aaron's rod. If Thomas the Archdeacon's report of certain evil and audacious men in Acre who treacherously passed him a poisoned drink is reliable, Andrew's inactivity was because of illness. Andrew decided to return home at the very beginning of 1218, 
even though Raoul of Marincourt, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, threatened him with excommunication. Andrew first visited Tripoli and participated in the marriage of Bohemond IV of Antioch and Melisande of Lusignan on 10 January. From Tripoli, he traveled to Cilicia, where he and Leo I of Armenia betrothed Andrew's youngest son, Andrew, and Leo's daughter, Isabella. Andrew proceeded through the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum before arriving in Nicaea. His cousins attacked him when he was in Nicaea. He arranged the marriage of his oldest son, Bela, to Maria Lascarina, a daughter of Emperor Theodore I Lascaris. When he arrived in Bulgaria, Andrew was detained until he gave full surety that his daughter would be united in marriage to Ivan Ozan II of Bulgaria, according to Thomas the Archdeacon. Andrew returned to Hungary in late 1218. Andrew's crusade had achieved nothing and brought him no honor, according to historian Thomas Van Cleef. Oliver of Paderborn, James of Vitry and other 13th-century authors blamed Andrew for the failure of the crusade. Stephen Donachy says that from examining Honorius's registers and the diplomatic communications between Andrew and the papal curia, Andrew's genuine commitment to the crusade should not be doubted nor his extensive preparations. For the campaign dismissed, even if he did ultimately bungle his opportunity. The Golden Bull of 1222 when he returned to Hungary, Andrew complained to Pope Honorius that his kingdom was in a miserable and destroyed state. Deprived of all of its revenues. A group of barons had even expelled Archbishop John from Hungary. Andrew was in massive debt because of his crusade, which forced him to impose extraordinarily high taxes and debase coinage. In 1218 or 1219, Mstislav Mastislavich invaded Halic and captured Andrew's son, Kalumen. Andrew compromised with Mastislavich. Kalumen was released, and Andrew's youngest son and namesake was betrothed to Mastislavich's daughter. In 1220, a group of lords persuaded Andrew to make his eldest son, Bela, the Duke of Croatia, Dalmatia, and Slavonia. Andrew employed Jews and Muslims to administer royal revenues, which caused a discord between Andrew and the Holy See starting in the early 1220s. Pope Honorius urged Andrew and Queen Yolanda to prohibit Muslims from employing Christians. Andrew confirmed the privileges of clergymen, including their exemption from taxes and their right to be exclusively judged by church courts, but also prohibited the consecration of Ugvornisai, castle folk and other serfs in early 1222. However, a new conflict emerged between Andrew and the Holy See after he persuaded Bela to separate from his wife, Maria Lascarina. An immense crowd approached Andrew around June 1222, demanding grave and unjust things, according to a letter of Pope Honorius. Actually, the royal servants, who were landowners directly subject to the monarch's power and obliged to fight in the royal army, assembled, forcing Andrew to dismiss Julius Kahn and his other officials. Andrew was also forced to issue a royal charter, the Golden Bull of 1222. The charter summarized the liberties of the royal servants, including their exemption from taxes and the jurisdiction of the Ispans. The last clause of the Golden Bull authorized the bishops as well as the other barons and nobles of the realm, singularly and in common to resist the monarch if he did not honor the provisions of the charter. The Golden Bull clearly distinguished the royal servants from the king's other subjects, which led to the rise of the Hungarian nobility. The Golden Bull is commonly compared with England's Magna Carta, a similar charter which was sealed a few years earlier in 1215. A significant difference between them is that, in England, the settlement strengthened the position of all the royal subjects but, in Hungary, the aristocracy came to dominate both the crown and the lower orders. Andrew discharged Palatine Theodore Chanad and restored Julius Kahn in the second half of 1222. The following year, Pope Honorius urged Andrew to launch a new crusade. If the report of the Continuatio Clostra Nubergensis is reliable, Andrew took the cross to show that he intended to launch a new crusade, but no other sources mention this event. Andrew planned to arrange a new marriage for his eldest son, Bela, but Pope Honorius mediated a reconciliation between Bela and his wife in the autumn of 1223. This angered Andrew, and Bela fled to Austria. He returned in 1224 after the bishops persuaded Andrew to forgive him. In his Diploma Andrenum of 1224, Andrew confirmed the privileges of the Saxons who inhabited the region of Hermannstadt in southern Transylvania. The following year, he launched a campaign against the Teutonic Knights, who had attempted to eliminate his suzerainty. The knights were forced to leave Barkasog and the neighboring lands. Andrew's envoys and Leopold VI of Austria signed a treaty on 6 June, 
which ended the armed conflicts along the Hungarian-Austrian border. As part of the treaty, Leopold VI paid an indemnification for the damages that his troops had caused in Hungary. Andrew made his oldest son, Bela, Duke of Transylvania. Bela's former duchy was given to Andrew's second son, Kalaman, in 1226. Duke Bela started expanding his suzerainty over the Cumans, who inhabited the lands east of the Carpathian Mountains. Andrew launched a campaign against Mstislav Mastislavich in 1226 because the latter refused to grant Halic to Andrew's youngest son despite a previous compromise. Andrew besieged and captured Przemysl, Tarabovl, and other fortresses in Halic. However, his troops were routed at Kramenets and Svenigorod, forcing him to withdraw. Despite his victories, Mastislavich ceded Halic to Andrew's son in early 1227. Andrew's statute on Hero Square in Budapest in 1228, Andrew authorized his son, Bela, to revise his previous land grants. Pope Honorius also supported Bela's efforts. Bela confiscated the domains of two noblemen, Simon Caxix and Bankbar Kalin, who had taken part in the conspiracy to murder Queen Gertrude. In 1229, upon Bela's proposal, Andrew confirmed the privileges of the Cuman chieftains who had subjected themselves to Bela. Robert, Archbishop of Estergom made a complaint about Andrew to the Holy See, because Andrew continued to employ Jews and Muslims. Pope Gregory IX authorized the Archbishop to perform acts of religious censure to persuade Andrew to dismiss his non-Christian officials. Under duress, Andrew issued a new Golden Bull in 1231, which confirmed that Muslims were banned from employment, and empowered the Archbishop of Estergom to excommunicate the king if he failed to honor the provisions of the new Golden Bull. In the second half of the year, Andrew invaded Halic and restored his youngest son, Andrew, to the throne. Archbishop Robert excommunicated Palatine Denis and put Hungary under an interdict on February 25, 1232, because the employment of Jews and Muslims continued despite the Golden Bull of 1231. Since the Archbishop accused the Muslims of persuading Andrew to seize church property, Andrew restored properties to the Archbishop, who soon suspended the interdict. Upon Andrew's demand, Pope Gregory sent Cardinal Giacomo di Pecorarius as legate to Hungary and promised that nobody would be excommunicated without the Pope's special authorization. Although Andrew departed for Halic to support his youngest son in a fight against Daniel Romanevich, he continued his negotiations with the papal legate. On August 20, 1233, in the forests of Berig, he vowed that he would not employ Jews and Muslims to administrate royal revenues, and would pay 10,000 marks as compensation for usurped church revenues. Andrew repeated his oath in Estergom in September. Andrew and Frederick II, Duke of Austria, signed a peace treaty in late 1233. Andrew, who had been widowed, married the 23-year-old Beatrice d'Este on May 14, 1234, even though his sons were sharply opposed to his third marriage. John, Bishop of Bosnia, put Hungary under a new interdict in the first half of 1234 because Andrew had not dismissed his non-Christian officials despite his oath of Beric. Andrew and Archbishop Robert of Estergom protested against the Bishop's Act at the Holy See. Danilo Romanovich laid siege to Halic, and Andrew's youngest son died during the siege in the autumn of 1234. However, Andrew stormed Austria in the summer of 1235, forcing Duke Frederick to pay an indemnification for damages that his troops had caused while raiding Hungary. Upon Andrew's demand, Pope Gregory declared on 31 August that Andrew and his sons could only be excommunicated by the authorization of the Holy See. Andrew died on 21 September, and was buried in Igra Abbey. Andrew's first wife, Gertrude of Morania, was born around 1185, according to historian Gula Christo. Their first child, Mary, was born in 1203 or 1204. She became the wife of Ivan Ozan II of Bulgaria. Andrew's eldest son, Bela, was born in 1206. He later succeeded his father as king. Bela's younger sister, Elizabeth, was born in 1207. She married Louis IV, Landgrave of Thuringia. She died in 1231 and was canonized during Andrew's life. Andrew's second son, Columan, was born in 1208. His third son, Andrew, was born around 1210. Columan and Andrew each ruled the Principality of Halic for a short period. Two years after his first wife was murdered, Andrew married Yolanda de Courtney, who was born around 1198. Their only child, Yolanda, was born around 1219 and married James I of Aragon. 
Andrew's third wife, Beatrice d'Este, was about 23 when they married in 1234. She gave birth to a son, Stephen, after Andrew's death. However, Andrew's two older sons, Bela and Columan, accused her of adultery and considered her child to be a bastard. Her grandson, Andrew, became the last monarch of the House of Arpad. Thanks for watching.